Hey, we are taking another dive into my Van Halen collection. We're going over cassettes. Pretty much just uh, the studio albums that I have on cassettes. These are all my original ones I bought back in the day. This was this little, you know, maybe this was a sign of what was to happen. Because I remember I had this little uh, case here that you could sit on your thing. It could hold six cassettes. And little did I know, this version of the band, there would be no seventh. Uh, so maybe that was the sign of things to come, but I got my little VH Forever on the side here and a U68 sticker from back in the day. And this little logo that I made, like a globe with the Van Halen wings back in the high school or something like that. But we're gonna just go through these real quick and I'll just show you the cassettes I have for the band. First up from 1978, of course, is the debut Van Halen 1. And I remember picking up these. I probably had the albums first, like the LPs. And then I bought, when I started driving, I probably went out and bought the cassettes then. Um, so like, you know, a little bit later in the 80s so that I could have them in the car to just play, you know. Um, and they didn't do too much with the little interlays or whatever you call them for uh, these early cassettes, you know, pretty basic, nothing. You know, that, you know, later on, and we'll get to some of those where, you know, you start folding them out and there's all kinds of info and lyrics and stuff, but that's uh, Van Halen 1. 79, we get Van Halen 2, and some of these cassettes, sometimes they had this little Warner Brothers sticker. I don't know if, what, if that was some sort of security thing or what, but we get Van Halen 2, again, pretty bare bones, the inside, nothing really to write home about, just the track listing and stuff. That's Van Halen too. 1980, we get Women and Children first. And you know, Van, like a lot of cassettes were made by the record companies. They all sort of stuck to like some sort of, you know, basic like template. Like this was Warner Brothers, you know? It always sort of had the album up here. And then for the most part, they'd have this black section down here that would have the, the artists and the title. Um, most of them, sometimes you'll see coming up, they kind of change that. And certainly when we get a little bit later into the eighties, that all changes. But again, women and children first on these. And again, the other thing, which we'll see change soon, the cassettes were always like these white cassettes. And then later that changed. And again, same thing inside, nothing, just pretty basic track listing. 1981, fair warning. I feel like when I bought these, the cassettes. I ever kind of remember going out and kind of like picking up like, I think there was like a period of like maybe two or three weeks where I bought like, you know, I got a paycheck from my job and I bought two of the cassettes. And then the next week when I got the next paycheck, I bought the other two. And then a week after that, bought the other, you know, so like I bought the six main uh, first Van Halen cassettes. Like, I feel like I bought them like pretty rapidly when I wanted to pick up the cassettes. This one, we get a little bit more information inside, sort of like, oh, they got the little quote that's on the album and someone said, fair warning, strike that poor boy down or whatever. Um, but it's also gives you a little bit more information. Um, some of the album uh, credits, you know, uh, with managers, art direction, all that stuff, fan club information. So now we, 81, we start to get a little bit more information inside. Still not a lot, but a little bit. 1982. Diver Down, wait, what? What the hell are they doing with this? It's supposed to be like, what? No. <laughs> but, uh, so now here you see like Warner Brothers kind of uh, veering away from their standard template for the uh, album covers. I don't, I don't know, maybe it's just because of the, the way this album artwork was designed, they decided to do that. Um, but you get the standard white cassette and now we're getting some Something else, it's starting to fold out. We get your standard album credits in here. You got the famous picture of them. I think this was the Tangerine Bowl. They were opening for the Rolling Stones. So it's them at the concert. And you got the picture of the band circa 1982. Um, so you're getting a little bit more there for your money from 1982 and Warner Brothers. Diver Down, love this record. This was actually, actually, and this is it. This was the first cassette this is the first album anything i owned from van halen i got this through like one of those record uh clubs with the like 11 records or cassettes for a penny um i remember picking this one out because it was really popular i wasn't really into van halen that much when this 
this was probably, we're talking late 82 or maybe 83. Um, but everybody who I went to school with was into Van Halen. And I finally decided to kind of get on board. So I got this with those 12 cassettes for a penny. And I remember popping this in and I just instantly sort of connected with it. It just instantly seemed familiar. And I just was from that day on, whatever day that was, I, you know, I was a fan and a fan for life. Here we is. And of course, from 1984 is 1984. And again, Warner Brothers decides not to go with their generic template. They put the uh, album cover spread out over the whole front of the cassette there. Still the white cassette, as you can see. And interestingly enough, Diver Down, they have a little bit of a fold out, a little picture. But now 1984, nope, we go back to just the regular old thing with the album credits and everything, but no inner picture or anything like that. The interesting thing here that I have is, uh, I don't know why I even asked, but I remember my mom going to England and I don't know what year this is. This is not 1984. This is maybe 1990 you know, or something like that. And I was, at that time, I was really collecting Van Halen stuff or whatever. And for some reason, I asked her to pick me up a Van Halen cassette. Um, and she picked up 1984. Now, the interesting thing here, this is the from UK. As you can see, for some reason, the 1984 is not on the uh, album cover there. The other interesting thing is the British... Here's the U.S. cassette that I bought in the 80s. And here's the British one, the old uh, clear cassettes, which sort of started taking hold in, I guess, um, 86 maybe, maybe late 85 or 86, when some of the companies started switching over to these clear cassettes instead of the white ones. And, uh, and then from there on, they were almost always on clear ones. So it was kind of interesting that this was... Uh, put out on a clear cassette over there in England. So that's my uh, kind of import of 1984. Also from 1984, we have the Wildlife soundtrack. And obviously I picked this up for the uh, Edward Van Halen track on here called Donut City. And that's the only Edward Van Halen music on here. He did the score for the whole movie, but the only thing included on the soundtrack was uh, Donut City, which was nice to have. And this has never been, there's bootlegs of this on CD, but it was only ever released on vinyl and cassette. But you can, uh, it's on YouTube. You can listen to Donut City on YouTube, but it's a really good track. 1985, we get Dave's solo EP. It was supposed to hold us over till the next Van Halen album, but that didn't happen. Uh, Crazy from the Heat. And it's in the old generic Warner Brothers with the uh, black bottom thing. And this one folds out, just more credits, so no pictures inside. It's just got all the different players on all the albums and stuff for the inner little inlay thing there. Fun record. Love Coconut Grove on this record. 1986, we've got Dave's Eat em and Smile. I remember picking this up that summer and just listening to this nonstop. See, now we're on 86. Now we're in the uh, clear cassettes here in the United States. This folds out quite a bit. And it's got, you know, just more of the album credits. And then you got this other picture of Dave that's uh, the back of the album. That is Eat em and Smile from David Lee Roth. 1988, we get Skyscraper from David Lee Roth. And again, folds out. Now we're really into this stuff now with the cassettes. Uh, it's got lyrics, some, another picture and stuff. This was a good record. I mean, I wore this tape out back in the day when this came out and uh, listened to it quite a bit. Now it seems a little dated to me, some of the some of the keyboard stuff, synthesizer stuff, is a little seems a little dated to me, but but I remember having this in my cassette player for months, listening to this nonstop. 1988, we get Van Halen OU812. So I bought a 5150 on LP when it came out, and that was the only version I had until years later when I bought the CD. 
uh, when OU812 came out, I decided since I was driving then and um, you spending a lot of time in the car, I decided to pick up the cassette. And again, this folds out. Um, got the lyrics in here. And this little picture of the monkey, which was the uh, on the album. They also used that as the 45 cover for Black and Blue. Um, and I think, let's see, is it on here? No, the, uh, there's a bonus track if you bought the CD. I think it was the B-side of Black and Blue, but uh, it was a cover, I think, of a Little Feet song, maybe uh, A Apolitical Blues or whatever it's called. It's not on the cassette, but I think, it, I think it's on the CD and that's it. I don't think it's on the vinyl. I think it's just on the CD. That's uh, Van Halen, OU812, 91. We got David Lee Roth, Little Ain't Enough. Listen to this quite a bit again, driving a lot. At that time, I only had a cassette player in my car, so the cassette got played quite a bit. Folds out, you got the uh, shark there, got this picture and lyrics and all the album credits and stuff. So, you know, like I said, you know, the difference between like, say those early Van Halen records and now 1991, you could see a lot more works going into these cassettes, you know, a little, adding a little more, makes you feel like you're getting a little more for your money. 1994, we get David Lee Roth, Your Filthy Little Mouth. And interesting thing here, now he's on Reprise Records, and I don't think you can really see it, but the cassette, the little thing behind the, uh, the clear casing, it's like blue. I don't know if that was Reprise's like thing, if they were all blue like that, or if it was just this one for some reason. Um, good record. I don't know what this is, this Digilog. I don't know what the hell that is, like some sort of mashup of digital and analog. I'm not really sure what that's all about. But again, this folds out like crazy. And it's got a lot of the artwork from the inside the album, lyrics, and credits, and some other pictures and stuff. Uh, but yeah, like again, same thing. You know, they're really putting a lot of work into these inner cassette things because they're probably selling. I mean, at this point, 94 vinyl is kind of pretty much faded to obscurity. Um, it has not, you know, had its resurgence yet. So a lot of people are buying CDs and a lot of people are still buying cassettes, you know, because that's the portable, this is the portable uh, format at that time is cassettes. You can put them in your backpack, listen to your Walkman, you know, whatever. So it's, cassettes are still kind of you know, happening. So I think that's why they put a lot of this extra work into the cassettes, you know, folding out the inlay, stuff like that. And then 1996, we get Best of Volume 1. And there is no Volume 2, which you knew was going to happen. I remember there being an article in some magazine when they put this out, where they were talking about other greatest hits albums, when the band is called like a greatest hits record, Volume 1. And, and they were sort of comparing this to these other greatest hits volume ones that never had a volume two, you know? Um, and it was just funny how like there were a handful of them and you know, kind of, at the time this band was going through so much kind of like stuff behind the scenes that, you know, it wasn't a big shock that there was never a volume two, you know? Um, but this had the uh, reunion tracks with Dave. The inside was a little disappointing because it basically just, had their discography, you know, like listed the albums with the track titles and they got some stuff wrong. I think on, was it Fair Warning? Or no, Women and Children First. Take the whiskey home, not take your whiskey home. They screwed that up. Um, and they got like just some picture, I guess it's from 5150 of the little room with all the cables everywhere and stuff. You know, like something like this, a career retrospective sort of thing you would have wanted to see like some like liner notes inside or something like that, but there was none of that. It was just like, here's the other albums you can buy in our disc in our catalog, you know. This is probably the last cassette that I've ever bought. Um, I mean, I picked up a Who Face Dances to kind of replace my lost childhood one um, not too long ago, but as far as like going into a record store or whatever and buying a cassette, I'm pretty sure I bought this when it came out in 1996 and I'm pretty sure this was probably the last cassette that I ever really purchased, you know, to listen to or whatever. And real quickly, I'll just show you a couple of uh, singles I have. We have David Lee Roth, Just Like Paradise, which was backed with the bottom line from Skyscraper as well. We've got Stand Up, 
which was backed with what? I don't know. It's not on here. But that's Stand Up. And then the third single from Skyscraper, Damn Good, from David Lee Roth. And in 1991, it was interesting because this is uh, Sensible Shoes from uh, David Lee Roth, uh, backed with Lady Luck. Um, but it was interesting because around this time, 91, a lot of these bands, like the rock bands, uh, weren't putting out singles anymore. You couldn't find a 45 or a Cus single. Um, you know, they just weren't really releasing them for some reason. I don't know why. Stuff was still getting played on radio, but they weren't releasing really like singles like to buy separately. And I remember when I saw this, it was kind of surprising to see this because, you know, this was after the album had been out for a while and had some other tracks play on the radio. So it was just kind of odd that this one, I mean, Warner Brothers must have just for some reason thought maybe this song will hit and maybe it'll you know, pay off for your record, or maybe the album wasn't selling as great as they thought, and they felt maybe this was like sort of a last ditch effort to try to maybe bump some sales up. I don't know, but that's Sensible Shoes. And then from 95, we get Van Halen from the Bounce album, Not Enough, and Amsterdam was on the back. And a lot of people hated Amsterdam, like the music I think they liked, but they thought the lyrics were, were stupid. But, um, I don't know, I kind of liked it. I mean, I didn't like Not Enough. It was just another kind of sort of, you know, schmaltzy, like kind of ballad that we were getting a lot from the Van Hagar version of this band. Um, can't believe I just said that. I've never really referred to them as Van Hagar, but uh, whatever. But uh, I wasn't really crazy about that Not Enough. Um, I know some people worked on a music video downtown in Los Angeles, but... Um, uh, but I kind of liked Amsterdam. I don't know. It just kind of sounded like a fun rock song to me. And that, I, I don't think I owned Balance at the time. And that's why I bought this single, because I liked Amsterdam and wanted to listen to it. Um, I picked up uh, Balance a little bit later after that. And really quick, like a lot of us back in the day, you would make like your mixed cassettes of your uh, favorite band or just different songs that you like to have a cassette to play in your car. And I used to make these best of... Van Halen, my version of Best of Van Halen. I always called them Hide Your Sheep, which was the name of the uh, tour from 1982-83, the Diver Down tour. So these are just like, and I would do it up, man. Like I would, uh, I would fill the cassettes with all the records and I do like these little like homemade labels. Like this just has the logo. And on the side you could see like, I mean, I really tried to like mimic you know, the the real like labels and stuff on my computer to try to make it look like legit, you know? And um, even the back, I even give credit to Ted Templeman and Don Landy, you know, and stuff. But that was one, and then this was another one. I just used red, but I kind of cut and pasted the sides, like the Warner Brother logo and stuff. And I type them up and everything, but I just thought that was kind of funny. These are my little homemade Hydra Sheep the best of Van Halen's made by Steve. Now available wherever cassettes are sold. No. <laughs> but anyways, thanks for watching. I, like I said, I just wanted to kind of breeze through these cassettes I had for the band. I used to have the little um, two for one of Fair Warning and Women and Children First, but I just recently sold that. So that's out of the collection now. Um, but uh, thanks for watching. I'd love to hear your uh, comments below about your Van Halen collection, the cassettes you have, or what have you. So please, by all means, leave that. Like the video, subscribe, all that crap. And uh, we'll see you next time.